Traveling. Milan. Throughout my Easter holidays, I visited Milan in the north of Italy. I've already visited other incredible Italian cities such as Rome, Florence, and I'd also better not forget Genoa, also in northern Italy. But I'd never been to Milan, and I have to say it's unquestionably worth it, despite unfortunately not getting tickets to go and visit The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. Ever since I read the book by Dan Brown, I've wanted to check out whether or not all the info that Dan touches on in his book is exact, such as the inclusion of Mary Magdalena by Jesus' right side, apparently her auburn flowing hair, delicate folded hands and a hint of a woman's bosom. The Da Vinci Code is a lovely intriguing book and I couldn't recommend it more, I just wish I'd gotten tickets but you must get them in advance otherwise you can't get in. My husband talked me into travelling at Easton after considering Amsterdam, we went for Milan. And walking around you can see why it's always been a rich and important city. And despite its close proximity to the Alps, which you can catch a glimpse of provided that you get high enough up, it's a fairly flat city and not half as tough on the legs as Lisbon. It offers a broad range of culture, buildings, some of them with immense statues and arcs. It allegedly took almost 200 years to build the cathedral. It's a solid example of Gothic architecture. Walking in cities is a really beautiful experience, especially when you get feel a bit lost in the city and fortunately you run into one of the nicest streets with incredible houses, amazing architecture and of course on the ground floor of all these houses you have the coolest, most fashionable and chic shops in the city. Which brings me to my next point. Prices in these kinds of shops are also the most expensive, but if you like shopping You'll definitely have a lot of fun, even if you don't buy anything. Milan more than deserves its tag of being a world leader in fashion and design. Milan were victim to extensive bombing in by Allied forces throughout World War II, suffering heavy damage and a few months prior to the war's end, Mussolini's courts were brought to Milan and hung upside down alongside his mistress, Clara Pitacci, and some other members of his government in the Piazzale di Reto on meat hooks. Mussolini's body was ridiculed, abused, spat on, shot at, kicked and stoned. This was done firstly to discourage any fascists who were keen to keep fighting on and furthermore as an act of revenge as many of his enemies had been executed in the very same piazza. Fascist loyalist Achille Staracci was taken to the Piazza Loreto after his capture and shown the beaten up dead body of Mussolini. Staracci who once said of Mussolini, he's a god, saluted what was left of his leader just before he was shot. The body of Staracci was subsequently hung up next to the body of Mussolini. Our trip lasted three days, enough time to allow us to find some marvellous places and enjoy some Italian food. There are some truly world class eateries in Milan and only Naples betters it for Michelin stars. You can find quite special pizza joints where you can get any pizza you might fancy and drink any cocktails with the pizza. It was a little odd for me drinking a gin and tonic with a margarita pizza, but it was chock-a-block and was another extremely cool and chic place with everybody sat eating pizza and drinking champagne, wine, gin, rum or whatever. My husband was a little bit sceptical because it's only pizza, but it was a very funny offbeat place. The seafood in Milan is quite nice too, despite not being a typical foodstuff over there. But with Milan being kinda close to the sea, it comes to Milan really fresh. And you can also try the famous Milanesa, a thin slice of meat fried with breadcrumbs. Milan's beyond nice, with plenty of things to do and see. I still have a fair few things to do on my next visit when I hope to have a bit more time to enjoy the city and visit Da Vinci's Cenacolo.